Hello, it's Ken1171 here, and in this video, I want to show you a new script I have been working on called the Duff Prop Converter. Let's open it up here, and uh, it might look similar to my previous script released last month that converted uh, Duff poses um, to poser format. This one uh, handles props and figures. So let's cover uh, what this does with examples. It has three operation modes. The first one is the, the, the one that uh, we're going to be using the most. What it does is, uh, here we have a um, hair piece from Da Studio 4 in the format. And this is actually a figure hair. So uh, let's convert that to poser. And uh, oh, yeah, and before I do that, uh, I want to select the figure's head, make sure the head is selected, and enable auto parent on this, uh, in this mode. Uh, and that's going to make uh, the hair to be converted to poser and auto parented to the head all in one go, which saves a little work. Okay, let's drag it here now. And uh, what it's doing uh, right now, it's uh, four things. It was pretty quickly, but it did four things. It has converted the geometry file uh, originally in DSF, which is the geometry format in the Studio 4, to other OBJ. And then it got the dev file and converted that into a poser prop format, which is PP2. It does that from scratch. And then the third thing it does is it converts any materials it finds in uh, in the dev file to poser format. This one doesn't have any. And actually, that's the reason I chose this one. Um, and once it has all this built into the, uh, into the prop, it links that OBJ it created uh, to this PP2. And then the fourth thing, it loads it to your poser scene. Uh, Auto parenting or not, depending on the choice you make here. So that's that's what happened under the hood. By just drag and drop in that file, it has done all that in one one go. It took about two seconds. Okay, but what if the the prop or figure in this case this was a figure? Um, it has loaded with no material. So what is it? What how can this be used if it has no materials? As we know, the materials in the studio are completely incompatible with Poser. So uh, what can we do? So I added this third uh, option here, load the material, exactly for that purpose. First, make sure you have the hair selected, and I do. And uh, you can choose any of these presets and apply them directly in Poser. And look at that. Uh, almost instantly, you have the material converted to poser uh, format. Um, you may be asking, but hey, Ken, those materials are completely incompatible. How did you manage to bring them to poser like this and so quickly? And here's the answer. Um, I, these are iRay or possibly 3DL materials, which is completely incompatible with poser. There's no way to convert them. So what I do is I bring only the texture maps that are plugged into the into the, the material in the studio to poser and build a basic shader uh, to make them work uh, in poser. So it's a kind of a crude conversion, but uh, you'll notice it's quite effective. So let's do a quick render here to see uh, what it looks like as it comes. And you will notice here that the specular component is leaking into the transparency map. And that's pretty easy to, to, to fix. So let's switch to the materials room. Let's select uh, the base, or uh, you will notice here this hair has uh, three material zones. I'm picking the first one, and I'm going to collapse everything just to speed things up. All right. and. Uh, what I want, let's organize this a little better. And, uh, okay, what was the problem again? I have a specular component from the hair leaking into the transparency map. So that's easy to fix. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get whatever is plugged into transparency and plug them into 
uh, the, the the specular color and specular value. So that's going to uh, control uh, the specular so it doesn't leak outside the transparency area. And that should do it, except that I have three material zones. I would have to repeat that three times. So I created a, another script that can handle this kind of thing, which is called the math edit. Um, if you have that, lucky you, because it's going to save you a lot of work, as I'm going to show here. But if you don't, I'm just going to do this to all three materials at the same time, um, which is going to the specular color and plugging whatever is on the transparency channel to it. And I'm going to do that to the transparency value. And when I, once I click OK, uh, it has done the same I did here to all three materials at once, and that saves us a lot of time. You may notice here that the panel stays uh, persistent even when we switch between rooms. That's a new feature I have requested to Renderosity to add to the Python uh, API, and that's really cool because now the panel doesn't close automatically anymore when we switch rooms. So let's render again and see the difference. So there you have it. The uh, transparency now is now clean. There is no more specular uh, leaking into them. And you may be asking, hey, Ken, why can't you automate this, make the script handle this automatically? Um, and the answer is, well, this is an, um, a generic tool. The script has no idea what kind of item you're converting to Poser. This has particular needs because it's a hair and has transparency. But what if you're loading a gun or um, any, any other kind of uh, prop into Poser? They don't have transparency. So uh, there is no one way to fix materials that would apply to everything. So if you consider that it's almost like a miracle that we could uh, bring these materials here, which are uh, in that studio format, which is incompatible with Poser. Uh, with just a drag and drop, I had them instantly in Poser. And we just had this little thing to adjust. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, we have to put things in perspective. You will have to adjust some materials, because remember, this is a universal material conversion. And it may need some adjusting, just like I showed you here. So OK, so that shows what the first and third uh, operation modes do, including some extra options like auto parent. You will notice here that if I select the head and bend it, the hair is parented to it. And that, that happened because I asked it to, okay, so when you convert it, also auto parent it to the head. And I had, I made sure the head was selected before I did that. Okay, so uh, what is this second mode here, the save duff prop? Well, um, there is a catch when I do the quick and dirty way, which is the way I just showed you here. The quick and dirty way, it creates an OBJ, creates a PP2 file, and it places it at a temporary folder. You can check in the manual uh, to see where that is. Um, but it does that in a quick and dirty way, meaning um, if you move the PP2 to another location, uh, you have to move the OBJ, and they have to stay in the same folder. That's not a good way to work with uh, uh, files in Poser. The, uh, the library items, such as uh, props, uh, should be independent from the geometry. But well, if you, want, uh, if you want it quick and dirty and you want to use this item directly in your scene and you don't, you don't care if it's not in your Poser library, do it this way. But if you want, on the other hand, to do it uh, the proper way, you want to save the item to your Poser library, separating the OBJ from the, uh, from the uh, uh, prop file, uh, you use the second option here. Um, let's move the figure to the side, and let's uh, go through an example. Move it to the side here to give me some space, and let's, Let's go through another example. I have here the 3D universe Kimberly uh, figure for Genesis, and she comes with a surfboard. Let's say I want to load this surfboard to my scene. I could use the quick and dirty way, but if I want to use uh, this prop 
more uh, uh, in other scenes, I probably want to save it to the to the poser library the proper way. So let's see how that works. Okay, so I want to um, choose the second option. I have options to auto parent. I don't want to auto parent the surfboard, but uh, you may or may not want to auto load it to the scene. I'm going to leave it on um, for this example. Uh, in this case, I don't need to. I just wanted it to be saved to the, my library. But let's see how it goes. Okay, drag and drop the uh, the surfboard here, and it's going to ask you, okay, where do you want to save this? You notice that by default it goes to my my default runtime, which is the Poser 12 runtime, and then it goes to libraries and props. It creates a temporary folder here called converted props, and it's asking me where to save it. So I'm going to choose the default here, but you can choose any other runtime or or folder inside props, uh, and select folder. You'll see that two things happen. First, uh, the surfboard is now on my scene. And that's because I asked it to be auto-loaded. If I didn't, the surfboard would not load. Okay, so um, this is a good example where uh, the uh, item already came with textures as opposed to the hair, which came with none. And you can see here that uh, it already loads with um, all the materials applied. I'm going to delete it from, uh, for, from the scene uh, by now. And I want to go to that folder, the converted props. And you notice here, it has created two files. It has automatically copied the thumbnail uh, and created a brand new PP2 file. And if you open that file, you'll notice that, okay, this is a regular uh, native poser file. And uh, it has created an OBJ and it has placed it in the geometries folder, which is uh, the proper way to do things if you want to reuse the prop later on. So um, uh, that's the main difference between the first and the second modes. The first will use the quick and dirty mode by putting the PP2 file and the OBJ in a temporary folder. Um, and uh, they have to be together uh, to work. And the second mode, it creates the proper paths and moves the OBJ file to the, to the geometries folder and links it to your uh, file. So I can now move this PP2 file to anywhere in my library, and it's going to work because it's properly linked to uh, OBJ file that is in the geometries folder. So that covers about everything, just to show you that this is a real file. I can load it into Poser. This is now in native format. All the materials converted. Uh, one last thing I want to talk about is um, you may be thinking, hey, Ken, how does it know where the, where the textures are? Is the script copying the, script, uh, the textures uh, to Poser? And the answer is no, it's not. Um, and you may be thinking, then how does it know where the textures are? Where, where is it getting them from? Well, I'm using a little trick here that uh, saves time, effort, and most of all, saves you disk space. What the script is doing here, it's, it's reusing the textures from that studio because that studio uses the same runtime folder structure for textures as Poser does. So what I did here is I open my Poser library, I go here to add runtime, and I add that uh, DAS studio runtime, this folder here. Of course, in your computer, it may be a different place, but go to your DAS contents, find the My Library uh, folder, and inside that there is a runtime uh, folder. And if you add that uh, to the Poser library as an external runtime, now all the textures from DAS Studio are going to be shared with Poser without having to duplicate or move them anywhere. How cool is that? And this is what the script is doing here. It is reusing the textures from DAS Studio, and all you have to do is uh, what I just showed you. Uh, go to your Poser library and add that runtime folder from Dust Studio where you installed your Dust Studio contents as a, an external runtime in Poser. And then magically, all textures you have in Dust Studio are, are shared as, uh, with whatever you load using the script. So they are never duplicated. They are still uh, preserved and not duplicated, which is awesome. All right. That's about everything I wanted to show you, all the all the, the different operation modes. Notice that uh, the script gives you, give you 
uh, gives you clear instructions on what to do on each mode, what to do, and you have two tips um, describing every part of the interface so you don't have to guess it. And again, if you have any uh, doubts, you can always click the question mark and open the PDF manual at any time uh, to check for more information. And that's what I wanted to show you. Thanks for watching.